Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about my pregnancy symptoms with my first and second pregnancy compared to my pregnancy symptoms that I had when I had my early miscarriage. So my very first pregnancy was with my son who is now 8 years old and I was around 19 when I found out I was pregnant with him. My very first symptom with him was literally missing my period. Um, I had no other right off the bat symptoms. I just know, well, me and my husband noticed that I had missed my period. And so we did test and it came out as a light positive. And then we continued testing after that and obviously it got darker. So, and also I was going through a stage of smoking back then and I thank God that I was able to quit because of this pregnancy because if not I don't know where I would be right now but I did quit as soon as I found out I was pregnant but when I was pregnant um, in the early stages I had these coughing fits I'm not sure if I had a cold or it was because of the quitting the smoking but I was coughing and I was spitting out like the green mucus I know it's disgusting but I kind of researched it back then and some people say that it was because of quitting smoking your body is trying to clear everything out but it could have also been a pregnancy symptom because I know a lot of ladies experience colds and like viruses during early stages of pregnancies because your immune system is a little bit weaker during that time so other than the coughing my next symptom early early on was I was very tired and I was very hungry so tired and hungry I was taking naps all the time and I was at college around this time as well so it was very difficult to work and do my college classes so by the time I would get home I was just sleeping and I just had like an uncurable hunger it was always hungry so then um, after that the nausea came but I was getting morning sickness from those coughing fits that I would have so like the coughing would actually make me throw up whatever I had eaten previously so I don't know if it was really morning sickness or more just the gross feeling of spitting that stuff up that was making me throw up but later on um, I think starting the second trimester I was getting morning sickness for sure um, I couldn't eat like meat and chicken all of that made me nauseous and then the also experience a lot of like twinges or what they call like shocks in your uterus it's just now I know that it's just your uterus stretching and the baby growing but I was getting a lot of those little twinges um, sometimes on the left side sometimes on the right side so that was a main um, symptom that I had in the beginning so that is everything that I wrote down for my first pregnancy um, for my second one, it was my daughter, which is now six years old. I got pregnant with her two years after my son. So with that one, I remember clearly we hosted Christmas at our house. Um, it was a house we were renting. Um, so we were hosting Christmas at our house. And I believe it was Christmas Eve. I can't remember if it was Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. But... Um, I had also missed my period. I don't think I ever really realized it until um, that night. So I had, we had missed our period. We were so busy with planning all that stuff and cooking the food that it wasn't the first thing on my mind. But I do remember around that time I also had a cold and I was kind of like getting over a cold, cold and I was still coughing. And I clearly remember it because my grandma-in-law was there. And she was telling me I should take um, some type of medicine she was recommending for the cough. So I was getting over that cold, coughing a lot. So with both of my pregnancies, I was coughing. But I still think the first time it was because of the whole smoking thing. But who knows? It could be a coincidence. Could be could be an actual pregnancy symptom for me. And so I missed my period. And I remember that morning while we were cooking all the stuff for that Christmas dinner uh, my husband had picked up some McDonald's for breakfast and I ate something that I usually eat which was the egg white delight McMuffin I think I think I had that with the iced coffee and the hash brown as soon as I finished like the egg white McMuffin I felt like a wave of nausea so that was kind of weird and not something I usually experience but I blew it off we were busy preparing everything and we also had our grandma-in-law 
my grandma-in-law at home so I just brushed it off so that night I drank some Dayquil for my coughing because I just kept coughing at nighttime and as soon as I drank like the second sip of it I took a little cup of it as soon as I drank that second sip that familiar wave of nausea came again so I put two and two together I'm like okay I missed my period now that I think about it and I'm getting these very familiar waves of nausea that I had in my first pregnancy so that night it was either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day I cannot remember but that night I sent my husband to the pharmacy and he picked up pregnancy tests and I was pregnant and that time it wasn't like a light line it was pure like you're pregnant <laughs> so I don't know how far along I was probably farther along than my first pregnancy when we found out about my daughter so that pregnancy obviously ended up being a perfectly healthy pregnancy um, I had both my kids uh, naturally I did get the epidural and they were both hospital births my son was um, I went into labor naturally with him I believe it was a week before the due date and then with my daughter I had to get induced because I believe she was um, one week past the due date the last comparison I wanted to do was my most recent pregnancy if you guys haven't watched any of my other videos after my daughter I did get my tubal ligation so we were done having kids we had our boy and our girl and we were happy with that and we thought we didn't want any more kids at all so I got my tubes tied and then five years after getting my tubes tied is when I found out that I was pregnant again. Um, again, if you didn't watch any of my other videos, this third pregnancy ended in a miscarriage, a, a early miscarriage. But I'll talk about a little bit about the symptoms and why I kind of knew that this was going to happen. So for this one, obviously it was the most unexpected one of all because I'm supposed to have my tubes tied. I'm not supposed to be getting pregnant the rest of my life. They told me it was about a 99% success rate with getting your tubes tied versus getting on birth control. So, so the first thing that happened with this one was I had, around the time I was supposed to be getting my period, I started spotting brown. And I wasn't really keeping track of my cycles because I wasn't really worried about uh, getting pregnant obviously and just wasn't thinking about that so I spotted for two weeks I believe around the time I was um, probably implanting or something that's when I started spotting but after that I spotted for two whole weeks and then we kind of remember like oh I never got my period I'm still spotting so I thought I was getting my period but I've never spotted for two weeks I've never really spotted period so spotting for two weeks was kind of weird and I also had for I remember a few days before I actually took a pregnancy test I felt a very dull like pain and ache on the left side and it felt really uncomfortable to sleep on my stomach um, I would really feel the pressure on the left side every time I would lay on my stomach which was also making me like very restless at nighttime I wasn't sleeping good I was tossing and turning but for some reason it just didn't hit me that I could be pregnant. I didn't have any nausea yet. Um, I didn't have the tiredness, wanting to sleep all the time. And I didn't have any extra like hunger than what I usually have. So, oh, one thing I did have, I wasn't like hungry, but around that time, it was around springtime, so we were preparing for like a, a spring open farm day. And one of the activities I usually do for that is Easter cookie decorating. So I was um, basically stocking up on like Easter candies and icings and stuff like that for the kids to decorate the cookies. So I specifically remember I kept craving the jelly beans that I was buying. Out of all the candies I bought, jelly beans is something that I kept opening and then by the end of the day finishing the whole packet. So I think... I probably went to the store three or four times to restock on jelly beans so that I have enough for the farm day for the kids to decorate the cookies. So that was like one odd thing that I clearly remember. I just could not stop eating them. But other than that, I wasn't experiencing like any hunger or, or other cravings. 
So that one, okay, so that one, after that, after figuring out that I did miss my period that time, I took a pregnancy test and it was like right off the bat a strong positive. Like I didn't even have to wait the two minutes that it said on the box. It was just plain, clear as day positive. Told my husband to buy like three or four more different brands of pregnancy tests and took those as soon as he got home from work and they were all strong positives. So I also wrote down that that dull ache that I was having on the left side eventually did turn into like a crampy, I'm about to get my period type of feeling, which is something I get before getting my period now. And then the spotting, I kept like lightly brown spotting, but then it gradually turned into a brighter red blood. And then I kept taking pregnancy tests after the first one, and I noticed that the that second line started getting lighter and lighter, which was my HCG level dropping down because of the miscarriage. And of course I went to the doctor and hospital and they confirmed that it was a miscarriage. By the time I went to the hospital, my HCG was 50 um, ml or however they measure it. And then the second time I followed up with my doctor, it had dropped to like 13. So those were my physical symptoms that I had with all three of those pregnancies. Um, obviously with the first and second one, um, I never had a doubt of anything that could happen. I really never thought a miscarriage would happen to me ever. But like as I had physical symptoms and then also emotional symptoms. So with my first two, I clearly remember that I just felt like everything was going to be okay. Obviously, there's always the the thoughts of being young and not financially stable, but as for the health of the pregnancies, I always knew that everything was going to be okay until the end and they were going to be born healthy, which they were, and I thank God for that. But this third one, other than it being a extreme surprise pregnancy because I was not supposed to be pregnant again ever, um, I just from the beginning felt like something wasn't right with this pregnancy. It didn't feel like it was going to be like an, a successful pregnancy. I'm not sure. I guess it's like mother's intuition and I also the last thing I had written down specifically was when I called my mom well the first pregnancy I told her in person um, the second one I told her over the phone that she was gonna be a grandma for the second time and with this third one I clearly remember calling her and telling her like hey I got a positive pregnancy test I don't know if it's like real yet I still haven't went to the doctor but just telling you for now I got a positive pregnancy test and I know this is crazy because I got my tubes tied and stuff so it's almost like I had my doubts already from the beginning as soon as I found out like the way I worded it to her almost makes me feel like I knew what was gonna happen and she probably knew what was gonna happen as well so like somehow I just knew and I don't know where that came from but just putting like everything that was happening um, all together, the spotting that usually never happens, um, the lack of symptoms um, that usually never happens. I always had a lot of symptoms early on and just the emotional like feeling that it just wasn't going to happen successfully. And then obviously the actual miscarriage happened very quickly after that so I barely had time to make my appointments and all that before it all happened so I just wanted to make this video maybe it'll help somebody out that's trying to compare their symptoms and I just thought it would be cool to kind of think back at all my symptoms from all my pregnancies and just kind of see how it all played out with this one and me and my husband are still trying for baby number three um, we've been trying since April of last year, April 2019, so this is April 2020. We've been trying for a whole year now, but I am not losing hope. I still feel like I am supposed to have another child, and if I don't, then I'm pretty sure the sign for that will come. But as of now, we are staying hopeful, and we're still praying about it and hoping that it happens. It's just been a crazy experience, but I am happy to be able to experience this side of life because I can relate to a lot of women out there that 
have been struggling with infertility for years and years and years. My first two pregnancies were both unplanned and it makes you realize that life is very sensitive and that not everything goes as planned. Um, God has his own plans for each and every one of us and at the end of the day, whatever God's plan is, is what's going to happen. We can't change that. Even people that do like the IVF treatments and all that, it ends up failing for them as well. It's because it wasn't in God's plan or it's not in God's plan. So I'm a true believer in it will happen when it happens and if it doesn't then it just wasn't in God's plan. But nonetheless we're still going to keep trying for now until we get like a straight like feeling or sign that it's not going to happen for us anymore. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys have any input or have any comments about the symptoms or any other questions just comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, this channel is mostly about my TTC journey, weight loss, if we take any family trips, which that has been cut for now because of the whole coronavirus thing. We can't really travel anywhere. But as soon as the world opens back up again, I want to do more like Florida trips um, and fun little things to do with the kids. And I do some cooking videos, healthy um, recipes. And if you are interested in our farm channel, it's Beat Sweets Farm, and I will either link it in the comments, I'll put it in the comments, and if you go to our channels section on our page, you'll see a link to it too. So that page is mostly about videos of our farm, um, the animals, gardening, so if you're interested in that stuff as well, make sure to subscribe to that channel. And let me know that you've subscribed, and if you have a channel as well, so I can return back the favor and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!